competency or just I'll send an email with that in there to Ms. Willis. I guess that, 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 that's just one way. One way to get those drugs. Uh, how would you plan your occupation? All right. What officer we have here for which we got one officer? Which case he here for? He is on the three for positions two, three, and four, Your Honor. He is Officer Joshua Jackson with the Marta Police Department. All right. Daquan Wright. I'm going to bring Mr. Wright on up. Right. Daquan Wright. What case are you here for, Officer? Yes, sir. I think it's Omar Foster. Okay. All right. Yep. Position five. Come on in. Officer Cubits? Yes. Yeah, come on up, have a seat. Hold on one second for you. All right, I'll go ahead and swear you in. If you raise your right hand, you swear for him testimony about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do, Your Honor. All right, you can sit down, state your name, spell it for the court reporter, please. Yeah. I am Detective Joshua Jackson of the Marta Police Department, spelled J O S H U A Jackson, spelled J A C K S O N. All right, we'll stand by until they get. Uh, Mr. Wright out here. Judge Manning, this is the court reporter. Is that Mr. Clayton for the defense attorney? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to confirm. Yes, ma'am. All right, this is Daquan Wright. 22 CP 214988 128 days without indictment robbery by sudden snatching. You got 22 CP 214989 128 days without indictment uh, robbery by sudden snatching. Uh, position 4 22 CP 214990 128 days without indictment robbery by sudden snatching. And looks like Bones addressed on the 13th, but we can go ahead and address it again to Mr. Clayton. Go ahead, Mr. McCauley. Yes, Your Honor. Um, just for clarity of the record, we have three different instances. Um, I would like to go ahead and go in order um, for position number two, allegedly happened on 10 9 23, sir. Position number three was on 10 23. 22. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I said 23, I meant 22. So position number two um, occurred on 10 9 22. Position number three occurred on 10 3, 23 22. And position number four occurred on 10 21 22. I would like to go in that order, if that's okay with you, sir, for we can just go make sure that we're not confused in regards to the record. So you're going to go two, three, and four? Two, three, and four. Okay. With those specific dates. Okay. Even though those are out of order. Okay. okay. Yeah, Which, no, that's, that's fine. I really want to do this. Fine. Do you want to, if you want to go on quite a No, line, two, three, four is good. It, Let's it, go. It does. Sound good. Cool. All right. Officer Joshua Jackson. Yes, sir. Where are you currently employed? I am currently employed with the Marta Police Department. And were you employed with them on October 9th, 2022? Yes, sir. And how did you become aware of the Quan Wright? October 13th of 2022, I was notified of a theft by sudden snatching incident that occurred on the 9th of October 2022. Um, on the 13th, I was uh, notified by the victim, which is Miss Dina Bekelli. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, but. Can you please spell it for the record? It's going to be first name Dina, D I N A. Last name the Kelly is going to be B E K E L E. And what did you learn after speaking with her? Uh, she stated that her phone was snatched out of her hand while heading northbound from the airport on a train car. 
uh, around 11 p.m. hours. And were you able to confirm um, the information that she that she that she gave you? Yes, per the reports date and time, I viewed CCTV footage in relation to that date and time and saw that those actions did take place. And um, what train or station did this occur at? It was on train car 136. And where was that train car at when that when it occurred? I do not recall exactly where that train was. What county was it in? It was in Fulton County. And what happened? Uh, it, so she was on the train and a young gentleman that had on black pants with white stripes going down the side uh, had a face mask on. Uh, as she was on her phone, he walked to her, snatched her phone and ran off the train as the doors closed. And were you able to determine the identification of the man? Yes. So Miss Bekele actually utilized the tra the track her iPhone app, uh, and she found her phone at a local Walmart in the city of South Fulton. Uh, she made contact with a officer that works an extra job at that Walmart who they narrowed it down to that phone being in a eco ATM, which is where you can sell your cell phones and receive cash uh, from an automated machine. He was uh, able to contact the eco ATM. Uh, they came, opened the machine up and retrieved her phone. They were also able to run what's called a secondhand dealer report which shows the exact person who sold that phone to the ATM with pictures of the ID as well as pictures of the person at the time of it being sold. That uh, secondhand dealer report had pictures of Mr. Wright along with his identification. And in that picture, Mr. Wright was wearing the exact same pants as the suspect on CCTV footage. What color were the pants? Black pants with the white stripes going down the sides. Were you post certified during this investigation? Yes, sir. And did Miss Bekele identify? Mr. Wright at any time during this investigation? Uh, she did not. The CCTV that you reviewed, um, is it in color? I believe so. Um, yes, that one was in color. And are you able to see, um, is it in HD? Uh, yes, it's in HD, but certain cameras have different, depending on the age of that camera. It was the camera that you view for this case, was that case, was that camera um, footage in HD? Yes. Were you able to clearly see the black pants with white stripes? Yes. Were you able to see the height of the person in the CCTV video? You can see the height, but it still had to be relative to other people standing around. So I would have to still make an estimation of that. Were you able to um, see any hair um, on the CCTV video? Uh, no, sir, he wears a full face mask and sometimes a hood. Were you able to determine the, were you able to see the color shirt he was wearing? I did not. He, I believe he was wearing a jacket at the time. Did the person 
um, who did the transaction with the Eco ATM um, have on the same jacket? No, sir. He had he did not have on a jacket when the phone was sold. Just the same pants. What? On what date and time um, did the transaction occur at the uh, Eco ATM? That it occurred on the 10th of October, the next day. Do you know around what time? Uh, 2 47 p.m. And what time did the snatching occur? Around 11. Let's see if I can get an exact time for you. I apologize. It was around 11, 10 p.m. on the 9th of October. Is uh, Ms. Kelly is she holding her cell phone? Yes. In your investigation, was you able to determine did Ms. Kelly and Mr. Wright have any kind of relationship with one another? No, it, uh, they had no contact before that incident. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, Cross. Good afternoon, Officer Jackson. Uh, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Um, let me ask you, the CCT, CCTV footage that you viewed of the snatching um, in this case, was that preserved? Yes, sir. Okay. And is that uh, has that been saved and is that in evidence? Yes, sir. It's uh, uploaded to evidence.com. And evidence.com. Fantastic. Okay. Um, same question about... I, and, it was the, what did you call it? The second, sec, it was a second hand dealer report? Yes, sir. That's what they call it at uh, Eco ATM. Okay. And that's something that's, um, that's compiled by the, whatever company runs the Eco ATM? Yes, sir. Is that correct? Okay. Um, and has that, um, has that report been preserved? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, was there in this um, eco ATM? This um, was inside of a Walmart. Is that correct? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Um, did you talk to loss prevention at the Walmart in terms of getting any um, of their surveillance footage? I did. Okay. Were you able to do that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and has that been preserved? That I believe has not been preserved. Okay. Um, is there a reason why it was not preserved? Their systems and their employees operate a little differently, so I had to kind of go through a little more hoops to get their video. Okay, and so it just wasn't worth it. You just wasn't worth it to to go through the trouble. Oh, well, the Eco ATM had a very very good pictures and date and stamp, as well as a scan of his identification. I gotcha. Okay. So, um. Um, you indicated that the um, alleged victim did not do any sort of identification to identify Mr. Wright as the individual who... No, she did not. Okay. Um, was she presented with a lineup or anything like that? No, sir. He wore a full face mask. It wouldn't be probable to sew faces. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, and so is it fair to say that the, the only um, relationship between the individual who snatched the... Um, only visual um, connection between the two was the the pants that you mentioned. Yes, sir. And these were black pants with white stripes down the side. 
Yes, sir. Okay, so it's like the warm up pants. Yes, sir. The uh, like the Adidas. Like the Adidas. The Adidas. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, yes, sir. cut you off. This pretty. Um, that's a pretty popular style. Yes, sir. Of, of pants, right? Yes, sir. not something. Okay. Um. And this eco ATM, were you able to determine how much um, money was received by um, uh, by Mr. Wright uh, for the sale of this? Per the report, seventy five dollars cash. Um, were you the individual who um, actually arrested Mr. Wright on these warrants? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, and in terms of this, um, in terms of this particular warrant that we're talking about regarding the, the October the 9th, did you have any further um, um, participation on this investigation after the, after you received the um, the secondhand dealer report on October the 14th. Yes, sir. Um, while I was uh, investigating an additional case, um, I was able from the Walmart footage from this case on 10-9, uh, when he sold it on 10-10, I was able to see the vehicle that he exited and entered into at that Walmart. That vehicle uh, was, it, it will require me to speak of the other case, sir. So it, um, I'm all connected if you don't. Well, I mean, I I don't mind going into it if if you don't. Um, so, so I, I just want to I want to back up because it sounded I I thought that you said that you didn't have any uh, video footage from the Walmart. So I didn't preserve it. I do have photographs, okay. but I did not preserve the actual video movement of it. So the vehicle I do have photographs of. Okay, and that, how did you, how did you how did you get those photographs uh, from the Walmart uh, their CCTV system? So it's it's screen grabs from their CCTV system. Really? So I have to get back to you on that though to okay. make to ensure. And um, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but. It, is your testimony that the the car that he exited out of when he was selling this um, cell phone to is he, that he did the same thing in the same car at a yeah. future date? Uh, so I didn't go back to a future because it, it goes to another Walmart besides this one for a future date. Okay, but um, the vehicle in a different case, the uh, he utilized another victim's Uber transaction which led to his place of residence. Uh, that same type of vehicle was found in his place of residence. Uh, the vehicle was checked and it belonged to his mother. Okay, well, I, I, I'll, we can talk more about the vehicle, I suppose, when we get to those warrants. Yes, sir. Uh, that's fine. Um, Uh, no more questions on this particular warrant. All right, go ahead, Mr. McCullough. One follow-up question. Um, you discussed the vehicle. Um, were you able to determine through your investigation if a vehicle um, was associated with Mr. Daquan Wright? Yes. And, oh, I'm sorry. And how were you able to do that? I was able to do that through an additional case where an Uber transaction was made from a victim's phone to an address. I did a canvas of that address and found a vehicle matching that exact description with the same sticker in the window of that vehicle. And who was the owner of that vehicle? It was a uh, Miss Yolanda Wright. And who was, um, what is the relationship between Yolanda Wright and Daquan Wright? That is his his mother. And is the is that vehicle 
um, that you saw? Did you see that on 1010 through this investigation? So on 1010, I did not see it. I went back to that Walmart in reference to this incident to view CCTV to see uh, if it was in relation to the same suspect that I had already. And that's when I saw that vehicle. Thank you. No further questions in regards to this spe uh, specific charge. All right, anything else on this one? What was the date that you went back to, the, to this Walmart and the CCTV footage? Uh, it was, give me one second. I think I have it here. Dash Manning, can you repeat that question? I couldn't hear him. Can you repeat the question one more time? Uh, the, the question was, what was the date that you went back to the Walmart to view the CCT footage? This would have been the Walmart in South Fulton. It was October 25th. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead, Mr. McCauley. Am I going on to the next one? Sure, unless you have another question. Uh, no, I will be going on to position number three, Your Honor, and that will be 22CP214989. Yes, Your Honor, and that will be from the date of 1023. You're still under oath, officer. Yes. We won't look through all that again. Uh, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> officer Jackson, where are you currently employed? I am currently employed with the Marta Police Department. And were you employed with them on October 23rd, 2022? Yes, sir. And um, how did you become aware of Daquan White? On, sorry, make sure I have the right. And this will be the incident that occurred on the 23rd, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so on the 24th of October, I was notified of a theft by sudden snatching incident that occurred on the 23rd of October. Um, I was notified by a report that was made by Mr. Charles Wynn. Can you please spell um, his last name for the record? It'll be N-G-U-Y-E-N. And Charles, is that common spelling for the word for the name Charles? Yes, sir. So please proceed. And so the report that Mr. Charles Wynn stated that someone had stolen his cell phone while he was on board a train going northbound. Um, he stated that uh, he was holding his phone and a young gentleman came and snatched the phone right out of his hand and ran off of the train as the doors were closing. And through your investigation, was you able to um, uh, find any of um, this interaction on CCTV? Yes. So in reference to the dates and time placed in the report, I reviewed CCTV in reference to that time and saw that that incident did occur on train car 240. And was the train in Fulton County when this occurred? Yes. And please discuss a little bit more about your investigation. And so that uh, that actually occurred at Lakewood Station. Okay. Uh, that's where his phone was snatched from. And is Lakewood Station in Fulton County? Yes, sir. Okay. So, and did you review the CCTV in regards to this incident? Yes, sir. And what did you see on the CCTV? I saw a young gentleman that had on a face mask. Uh, walk up to the individual, the Mr. Wynn, and snatched his phone really quickly and ran off as the doors were closing. And um, were you able to see any clothing that the individual was wearing? Uh, that I do, I did, but I don't believe it matched exactly what was worn on a different day. So I believe it was just all black clothing. And what was the next steps in your investigation? Uh, so in Mr. Wynn's uh, report, he also stated that a Uber transaction, I believe an Uber Eats transaction was made on his Uber Eats account. Uh, that Uber Eats transaction was made to the exact same location that another incident that I had was made. And what was that address? It was 213 Harwell Place, Northwest, 
in Atlanta, Georgia. And after you learned that address, what did you do with that information? Uh, I went to the wall. Well, yes, I went to the Walmart on the 25th of October uh, and reviewed CCTV footage in reference to the 9th. Uh, that's how I saw the vehicle that Mr. Wright had entered and exited out of uh, with the same window sticker in the side. Uh, I went to 213 Harrow Place and Canvas, that area, due to multiple Uber transactions being made from multiple suspects of a snatch related incidents and saw that vehicle parked in the area of 213 Harwell Place. I then uh, initiated a check on that vehicle, which returned to Miss Yolanda Wright, which was his mother. Also, at a later date, uh, I got a notification from Eco ATM's regulatory affairs that his uh, phone matching that description of Mr. Wins was uh, retrieved by them. Uh, it was, what I do is I, I called Eco ATM, regulatory affairs, notify them of Mr. Wins make model of the phone as well as his EIEMI number that's only associated to that very particular phone. They place it in a system so that when that phone is so, uh, sold to them, they retrieve an alert. Uh, that phone was sold to them, an alert was retrieved, they notified me and they gave me the secondhand dealer report on that phone. What was, um, what was in the secondhand dealer report? In the secondhand dealer report, it was not Mr. Wright who sold the phone, but an, an, an additional individual. Um, but the, the cameras, there are multiple cameras on an eco ATM that shows different angles due to others using other people's ID to sell phones. Uh, he's unable to sell phones at this time because eco ATM blocked his identification from being used to sell any phones due to him being under investigation for snatch theft. Uh, so the cameras shows, the secret camera that they have there shows Mr. Wright standing next to a, another individual. Let me see if I can see his name. I apologize. Uh, that appeared to be in a wheelchair. And he's standing next to him as he's selling Mr. Wynn's phone in the Eco ATM. And how much did Mr. Wynn value his phone at? He valued his phone at $1,100, so $1,100 is what Mr. Wynn valued his phone. It's a Samsung Galaxy 22. And um, how much was a cell phone, the Samsung Galaxy 22, sold for at uh, Eco 22? It, it was sold for $44. And do you see the person that was caught by the secret camera in the courtroom that was standing? Um, do you but see them? Can remove their mask. Do you see them in the courtroom today? Oh, remove your mask. Yes, sir. Can you please describe an article of clothing that he is wearing? Uh, he is currently wearing an orange jumpsuit with a white shirt underneath it. May the court recognize he has positively identified the defendant. All right, noted. Were you post certified during this investigation? Yes, sir. Um, you had discussed the Uber each transaction. Was you able to determine um, the phone number that um, um, did it? Did they do it from the Galaxy? Uh, uh, so, Mr. Wynn just has an Uber Eats account that he can open up on any device. Okay. Um, and when he uh, received an email stating that his Uber Eats was used to make a transaction at 213 Harwell Place Northwest. Was he in possession of his cell phone when this transaction occurred? No, sir. When you went to the Walmart, 
Um, did you look at the Walmart CCTV? I did. Was there any vehicles that was associated um, with Mr. Wright through this investigation for the 10-23-22 incident? So I went to the Walmart on Research Center Drive, which is where the incident on 10-9 occurred. Okay. Uh, this Walmart was actually located in the city of East Point in 844 Cleveland Avenue. It was that Walmart that he, that Mr. Wynn's phone was sold to an eco ATM. And at that Walmart, were there any vehicles that um, you were able to associate with Mr. Wright or anybody in his family? I did not review the uh, CCTV footage at that particular Walmart. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, Cross. All right, Officer Jackson. Um, the um, the snatching event on October the twenty third um, that was captured on CCTV footage. Was that um, was that footage preserved? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Has sir. it been uploaded to evidence.com? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so the snatching took place on October 23rd. What date did the Uber Eats order occur? Uh, I apologize. I don't think I've written it. I do have the copy of that transaction. Uh, I just didn't write down the actual date on my notes. I apologize. Okay. Um, what about what? What date was the um, was the Samsung Galaxy? What date was that sold in the the um, vending machine? And that was sold on the twenty fifth of October. And that um, secondhand dealer report that's been preserved? Uh, yes. Okay. And so I'm clear as to this transaction on the 25th at the Eco ATM, you did not view any Walmart um, CCTV footage at that Walmart in East Point. Yes, sir. Not at that Walmart. Okay. All right. So when you're talking about the Chevrolet Tahoe, that was at the Walmart that was in, um, in the city, city of South Fulton. South Fulton. Yes, I got you. Okay. Um, did Mr. Nguyen ever do a, um, a identification of the individual who snatched his phone? No, sir. He's also had a mask on in that incident as well. I got you. Do you know what date um, Eco Plus, the Eco, Eco Plus company blocked um, Mr. Wright's ID? I believe so. Let me. Uh, it should have been the 25th of October. Let me uh, make sure. I believe it was the 25th, but I'll have to get with Eco ATM to make sure that date is correct. Okay. Um, 
All right, that's all the questions I have. Thanks. Thanks. All right, anything else? No follow up in regards to that case, Your Honor. I'm ready to go ahead and move on to position number four, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. Officer, you're still under oath. Go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Officer Jackson, we're currently employed at the Marta Police Department. And were you employed with them on December the 21st, 2022? Yes, sir. And for that date, um, did you become aware of a Daquan Wright? Uh, so on this date, I was uh, notified on the 24th of October. So the same day I was notified of and the additional incident. Um, I was notified by a report that a Mr. Antonius Diker, uh, it's spelled last name is spelled D I E K E R. And can you also spell the first name? Yes, sir. The first name is spelled A N T O N I U S. Thank you. Go ahead. And he made a report that his phone was snatched out of his hand at Lakewood Station as well as he was going northbound. And Lakewood Station is in what county? Fulton County. And after you was provided this information, did you um, look at Martyr's CCTV? Yes, sir. And so, you, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. In reference to the dates and times that Mr. Dyker made in his report, I reviewed CCTV footage in reference to those dates and times and saw that that incident did occur on train car 669. And did what did you see once you looked at it? I saw that Mr. Dyker was on his phone, actively on his phone, and right as the doors were about to close on the train, the young man walks up to Mr. Dyker, snatches his phone, and runs off the train as the doors are closing. And what was the next steps in your investigation? So uh, I didn't make the uh, connection instantly. Um, I uh, actually, Mr. Diker reached back out and stated that an Uber transaction was made on his account recently. Um, he gave me a copy of that transaction and that was an actual Uber driving transaction that was made to the address of 213 Harwell Place Northwest in Atlanta, Georgia. And after you learned um, um, at that address, what did you do next? Uh, I also placed Mr. Diker's phone on a, a flag list uh, in case that the Eco ATM was used again. And um, I related it to the uh, same uh, address that um, I found Mr. Uh, Wright's mother's truck. I'm sorry, sir. And what is um, Mr. Wright's mother name? It's Miss Yolanda Wright. I believe she was married at one point as well, so it may change. And how were you able to associate the vehicle with Miss Wright? Uh, the when I reviewed CCTV footage of the incident on the 9th, I saw the vehicle, a vehicle matching that description, a specific description with a very particular sticker at the bottom left corner of the window. I uh, saw Mr. Wright get in and out of that vehicle when he made the transaction. Uh, due to both of these Uber Eats transactions on two different phones stolen at two different times, both resulting at 213 Harwell Place Northwest, I went to that location and canvassed the area and saw that exact same model truck with that exact same particular window sticker at the bottom left corner parked in the area. I did a check on that vehicle through NCIC GCIC, which returned to a Miss Yolanda Wright, which was identified as Mr. Wright's mother. And you said um, from the Walmart um, CCTV, you're able to see Mr. Wright get in and out of the vehicle? Yes. Is that video in color? Yes. Are you able to see facial features? You can, well, what I did was I compared exactly what Mr. Wright had on at the time he sold the phone on the Eco ATM, followed him through the cameras 
going outside to the vehicle. And were you able to, was the person who got into that vehicle wearing the same clothes as the person who you saw on the Eco ATM um, footage? Yes, sir. And do you see um, the person who was in the Eco ATM CC uh, footage and the person who was in the Walmart footage in the courtroom at this time? Yes, sir. You can remove your mask. Can you please describe an article of clothing that he is wearing? He is currently wearing an orange jumpsuit with a white shirt underneath. May the court recognize he has positively identified the defendant. How much was the phone sold for okay. at? Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay. Um, how much was the, phone, the the cell phone sold for? So this phone uh, was was not sold at the Eco ATM. This uh, case was mainly connected through the him he using the exact same address in this uh, victim's Uber driving transaction that he used in the other victim's Uber Eats transaction. So not only did was food delivered there, but the suspect was also driven to that address. And did Mr. Um, Antonio Deaker, um, did he have possession on this phone when this Uber, e this Uber trip purchase went through? No, sir. I have no further questions at this time, Your Honor. All right, Cross. Oh. Sorry, bud. Hey, Officer Jackson. Yes, sir. Um, was Mr. Diker's phone ever recovered? No, sir. This phone was not recovered. Okay. Um, was there ever a um, search warrant or anything done on? Um, Mr. Wright's mother's house? No, sir. We didn't do a search warrant on Ms. Wright's mother's house. Okay. And so it's fair to say that the what's connecting this this incident is the the Uber trip. The Uber trip that was made on this particular phone. Yes, sir. Okay. Um can you tell me what's, what date was that Uber trip made? Believe the twelve. Let's see. I can't tell exactly which day that trip was made. He didn't uh, tell me until the twenty fourth of October. Okay, uh, but I do have that transaction as well preserved. Gotcha. And the um, CCTV footage from the MARTA um, that was preserved as well? Yes, sir. Okay. The um, Did Mr. Diker ever do an identification procedure regarding the, the person who snatched his phone? No, sir. He also had a mask on during this incident as well. Also, I forgot to mention that uh, the, his phone, his Find My iPhone app also was at that location as well when he tracked it. Uh, okay. Do you know what date? Do you know what that date that tracking occurred? The same day it was stolen, so the 21st. He tracked it to the, it wasn't a direct uh, tracking it listed that his phone was between the addresses of 210 and 213 Harwell Place, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia.
All right, that's all I've got. No further questions. Thank Any follow-up? No follow-up questions for this officer, Your Honor. I ask that he be released and allowed to leave, Your Honor. All right, thank you, officer. Stay safe. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. All right, we're here with argument. I would defer to the defense first, please. Mr. Clayton. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I asked the court to find no probable cause regarding the robbery by sudden snatching um, on each of these warrants, although I think the state has uh, proven theft by receiving stolen property. Um, there has been no identification by any of the uh, alleged victims in this case that uh, my client, Mr. Wright, was the individual who um, who snatched the um, the phones um, in, in any of these cases. Although I believe the state has proven probable cause as for um, theft by receiving stolen property on the and I'm uh, on the incident that occurred on. Well, the, the snatching that occurred on um, 22nd. On, on the on the ninth and on the twenty first, be, being those I'm sorry, the twenty third, being the, the ones that where the the items were disposed of in the ATM, they have the the photos. Right. Um, the the third one, Mister. Other than the fact that this hit on on a house, Mister. Um, that. Mr. Um, Wright's mother is associated with, there's nothing to connect Mr. Um, um, Wright with this phone. And e e even if it were, there's nothing to, there's, he's not been identified as the individual who um, actually snatched the phones from the, uh, the victims in this right. case. So uh, we would ask the court to bind it over on theft by receiving stolen property. All right, go ahead, Mr. McCauley. Yes, Your Honor. In regards to position number two, Your Honor, they were able to do the identification by the particular pants that he was wearing, Your Honor. Um, so they were able to see the exact same pants that was on a model was the same pants that was at the eight, the um the little cell phone ATM that he was using at that time. Um, and then also, Your Honor, um, we have the phone actually in that residence, that residence. Um, had a particular vehicle that was associated with his mother that was seen at two other different places, Your Honor, on 1023. We have him standing next to somebody because by that time um, he has already been um, stopped from using the ATM machines to sell this actual cell phone, Your Honor. And then in position number four, Your Honor, we have him getting inside the vehicle and outside the vehicle your honor um i ask that you find probable cause for and on uh position number four it's the find my iphone was actually um at the same residence that the officer was able to determine and a uber trip was used uh for that residence your honor i ask that you find probable cause for all three uh separate charges all right, I'll go ahead and find probable cause on all three cases. Bond was addressed on these on the 13th of April. So we can go ahead and address it again. Uh, pre Six prior arrests, defendant has numerous open cases. Um, 21 CP 201949 robbery, 201950 robbery, 20231. Two, identity theft, financial transaction, car fraud, criminal attempted felony. 21 SC 179827, robbery, criminal computer theft, computer forgery, five counts, computer trespass assigned to Judge Bar. Nothing further. All right, go ahead, Mr. Clayton. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Wright is 21 years old. He's um, a lifelong Georgia resident at the time. Um, he was uh, working at um, DHL, um, he does have a good address. Um, he has been in custody for 128 days at this point without without indictment on these charges. Um, his total bond on these three at the moment is $75,000. He does not have any hope of um, ever posting that. We would ask the court to consider reducing um, the bond on each of these. $10,000 I have one here before on the previous bond conditions to stay out of Fulton County. So he's not going to live in Fulton County, right? Um, 
I mean, for some reason, I put stay out of Fulton County. Usually, I don't do that unless they are not planning on living in Fulton oh, County. That's, that's correct. Is that, is that, is that uh, okay. That okay. All right, go ahead, Mr. McCauley. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we are definitely concerned about public property. We're also concerned in regards to um, public safety, Your Honor. We also heard uh, robbery charges, Your Honor. We This is a in, um, in the face kind of crime, Your Honor. So we're concerned for um, the victims. Also, one of the conditions we would like to add is um, that the defendant can uh, not ride on the murder, Your Honor. I think with the multiple cases that are there, I'm not sure if that is one of the conditions, but I um, am concerned for the, the public safety and for the riders of the martyr system. Um, if Mr. Wright is allowed to get back on there, and we would object to any decrease in regards to the amount of the bond. All right, so it looks like he has been told in case number 21 CP 201949 to stay away from 2848 Main Street. That was by Judge Borsky. Then he was told in 21 CP 201950 to stay away from all martyr, and that was uh, February the 15th of 2022. <clears throat> Pre-trial came off of your bond in 21 CP 202312 on January the 21st, 2023. So they came off the one that was on pre-trial. Like I said, Judge Borsky told you to stay away from 2848 MARTA on January the 20 January the 12th, 2022. Judge Barwick told you to stay away from all MARTA, February the 15th, 2022. I'm telling you right now, stay out of, on all of these. You're going to stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. You don't go on a MARTA bus. You are banned from MARTA. MARTA has told you you're banned from MARTA. You can't go on a bus. You can't walk down the street and see a bus stop and top and stop, stop and tie your shoe on that bench. You have to walk beyond that, actually 100 yards or so, was it 200 yards beyond that? Sit down on the curb and tie your shoe. Sir, when I say stay away from MARTA, you may not have believed Judge Borsky or Judge Barwick. I mean stay away from MARTA. We will revoke your bond and you will sit here till your trial. Do you understand? All right, we got a good affirmative. So on position two, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons, all those MARTA conditions. Stay away from MARTA. Stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or see your lawyer. Don't get gas. Don't get a flat tire. Don't get a snack. Stay away from 2848 Main Street. That is the MARTA. Stop there that you were at allegedly on the first time. No further contact with D-I-N-A-B-E-K-E-L-E. Ankle monitor is going to be paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, or employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule in the exact location you're going to be working. $20,000 good bond. On position three, it's 22CP214989. Let's see. Stay away from all MARTA. Same thing I said before. You can't ride on a bus. can't tie your shoe at a bus stop. You're absolutely banned from MARTA. MARTA has let you know they're banned. you're banned from there, but I'm not allowing you to go on MARTA either. Stay away from 2020 Lee Street, Southwest in Atlanta, Georgia. No further contact with Antonius, A-N-T-O-N-I-U-S-D-I-E-K-E-R. Like I said, stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. No flat tire, no snacks, no gas, no anything. Also, stay away from the Lindbergh Marta Station. That ankle monitor is going to be paid for by the county. 24-hour curfew. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. $20,000 good buy. Position 4, 22CP214990. Once again, stay away from all Marta property. If you see somebody wearing a Marta t-shirt, consider that Marta property. Don't go close to anybody. Stay away from 2020 Lee Street Southwest. No further contact with Charles Wynn, N-G-U-Y-E-N. -E Stay out of Fulton County unless you're for court or to see your lawyer. No gas, no snacks, no nothing. All right? You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, the exact location you're going to be working. I think I already said it. No drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. $20,000 good bond. Once again, sir, they came off your bond on the one case. So... On pretrial, just say so you no, know, Mr. Clayton. I don't know if you're assigned on that one. That's 21 CP 202312. You may want to get that back on a night calendar. Um, pretrial came off of that one. That's another, that's another case. Right. So I don't know if you, you want to get that on a night calendar. I, I probably do, yeah. Do I need, just need to file a new? Yeah, just another new bond motion. Yeah, and you can email Ms. Robinson because we obviously do a lot of them and just say, hey, flag it so we'll know. So that's 21CP202312. 
Best of luck to you, sir. All right, we got Omer Foster, Mr. Rosenhaver. Do we have any reports while they're getting this one, Mr. Omer Foster, ready on any of these other cases? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Because the rest of Miss Rosenhoover, I know she doesn't want to just sit here and wait on everybody. Oh, well, Miss Bray's on one, wherever she's at. There she oh, I see her now. Oh, she was she was asleep back there. <laughs> Do we have anything on uh Kajan Raglan, the officer on position one? Um, Your Honor, the officer is on an approved leave. We received that copy of the approved leave this morning at 1058. Okay, so um, when is the officer not on leave? Um, the officer is off leave as of the 8th. Okay, but Your Honor, this is like the third reset because this is on the calendar April 21st. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, so it's like the third reset on the calendar April 27th, 2023. Oh, no, that was that night in front of you. But there was a prior prelim schedule April 21st, 2023. He was not here. Uh, and then the officer was on approved leave. So how many approved leaves can you? Have? Yeah. So did you speak to? Did you, I mean, we'll reset it. Is he going to be on leave again? Your Honor, from what I received from the officer is that um, she is on approved leave as of right now. Um, I mean, do, is she coming back? Is this, is this like maternity leave or something? I mean, no. Is okay. is but I don't want to get her leave. Business, so yeah. That, that yeah. So. This officer will return on yes. the night. You're yes. sure? Yes. And let me look at my text message just to make sure. Your Honor, if we reset this case without objecting to, please play, could you please place in the reset order? No more resets. Because this is two times. Yeah, we can't. I mean, can't well, just right. Your Honor, um, she is on approved leave from five four to five eight. Her approved leave was uh, submitted on the twentieth, Your Honor, and we received um, this approved leave this morning at ten fifty eight. So, uh, oh, so she will be back on one day. Miss Watts, what do we got? Miss Bray, what's your schedule? I think we have like May, we were like in it May the 11th sometime. And oh, that's yeah, that's Judge Man. It doesn't necessarily have to be in front of me. Yeah, it'll be Judge Man, or we can do Friday Judge Dallas. But would there be enough time um, when she gets back to get her to subpoena to be at court that next week? Um, or do you want it out another week? Yeah, because we go from our published list and then that's when we make our subpoenas. And I just want to make sure that we have enough time to do it. I think trying to do it for next week. I just want to make sure we have enough time. Has the next parent. calendar already been published, Ms. Watts? Not yet. No, Judge, it hasn't. Okay. What, so what date do you have then? What's better for you, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Ms. Bray? You want it in the morning or an afternoon? Afternoon. Okay. Quickly say that. All right. She wants an afternoon, so give me a day. Okay. How about May 16th? And that'll put it on your calendar. May 16th at 1 p.m. Okay. 1 p.m. or 9 a.m.? She said 1 p.m. Miss Bray's oh, not a morning person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just can't get here by 9 because I'm coming from the middle of the road. That's where I stayed over there. Our GBI office was over there. And 5 o'clock works for you this evening. <laughs> All right, that's fine. So uh, May 16th at 1 p.m. All right. See you then. Do you want to go back there and talk to him or no? Just tell me it's reset. I will tell Okay. Last reset. Officer, I mean, we got to. So maybe you want to, if you know that, you need to reach out to that officer and let them know. All right. What about, uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Position number five, we're here on that one now. We're ready to go on that one. Position number six, Nicholas Meadows. Uh, yes, that officer, I emailed that officer personally last night. Um, I did not make uh, personal contact, but I did email them, reminding them of the preliminary. I didn't hear anything back, Your Honor. Um, in regards to position number seven, is William done with APD? 
I personally talked to the officer last night and reminded him of the the preliminary hearing today. And that officer said, "Pound sand, I'll be there. I'll be yeah. late." What did the officer well, say? I, I just I called, let him know, let him know. I mean, did you speak to him or did you leave a voicemail? This is, I, I talked to him personally. Said, How you doing, Officer Dunn? What's going on? You got to call his, tomorrow. And Officer Dunn said, "Okay." Okay. When I call, I usually let them know the name of the defendant. So maybe you need to start asking. So will you be there? Maybe this. Uh, uh, All right, Miss Rosemary, we'll go ahead on uh, Nicholas Meadows. Looks like this might be the first one, but you said you haven't heard from that officer. Yes, I have. Judge. No, I have not. Judge, Judge Manning, I'm sorry. My apologies. Is Miss Bray still in the on courtroom? Uh, Miss Bray, oh, here she is. Okay, I I was looking at the wrong date. Your 16th calendar is for the nine o'clock. Four o'clock has nine already. Oh, oh, yeah. For one o'clock, what does it have? One o'clock has nine, and your okay, nine a.m. has six. I'll be slightly late for that nine o'clock drum. Unless you want to move it to judgment. Are you sure? Quick, I'm just saying now. We like five minutes, ten minutes. The same, the same way you understand it with my client. It can go to the 18th if she doesn't mind. And it can you want the 18th? Is that what is that? A Friday? No, that's a Thursday. It's a Thursday, and we can do 1 p.m. Okay, okay. I'll do, I'll do May. So May 18th at 1 p.m. Yes. yes. May 18th at 1 p.m. All that. right. So, so before we get with this officer here, Nicholas Meadows, position six. You had no contact. You just said. They've been subpoenaed properly. What, what's happening? They have been subpoenaed properly, Your Honor. And through our process, we do subpoena the officers. We send over the subpoena to the custodian. Um, I actually did um, call Martyr um, Office itself. And at that time, I was provided his email. I did email him yesterday, Your Honor. Uh, him or her is all I have is d.bell. Um, I emailed them yesterday, reminding them of the actual preliminary hearing, and I did not hear back, Your Honor. So you never know if this is uh, their off day or what have you? Mm, no, Your Honor. Right, and ahead. that's why I still do make a call the day before. But even if it's an off day, our subpoenas still take precedent. All right, so go ahead for... Um Thank you, Judge. Um, for Mr. Meadows, he has been in custody for 125 days um, without any movement on this case. This is a 22 CP case. Um, the state has had ample time to get their officer here to indict this case, um, but they haven't. Mr. Meadows is being held on a $20,500 bond and has a hold. Um, at this point, Judge, we would ask for a dismissal for one of prosecution hearing no valid legal reason for the officer's absence today. Mr. McCauley. Your Honor, the officer was properly subpoenaed by our office. We did send out a uh, subpoena through our process through the custodian, Your Honor. The officer is aware of this actual hearing, and I did personally email the officer after calling the martyr um, security station myself um, and inquiring in regards to his personal information and letting them know that he would be needed today at 1 p.m. courtroom 1A in Fulton County Superior Court. The officer is not here at this time, Your Honor. All right, 126 days without indictment. One final reset, uh, Ms. Rosenhoover. What date, is there a day that works for you or doesn't? Judge, I think I'm in front of you a good bit in just <laughs> this coming month, so. Do you want that same the 18th? 18th At works. 1 p.m. or do you want it in the morning? Judge, whatever you prefer. I'm good with anything. The 18th, Miss uh, Miss Watts. Is that what you said? The 18th, 19th. What did you say? The 18th, Judge. 18th. What time? Yeah. 1 p.m. 18th at 1 p.m. Judge, and I. Okay, so the okay, 18th, we do have a meeting scheduled by our circuit public defender, oh, okay. Mr. Kenner, at 2 p.m. So, oh, so there's Miss Bray is going to have an excuse not to be here. She didn't think perhaps. about. Perhaps I you just want it that my morning. Calendar. Morning would be. Incredible. Thank you. Do we have anything at nine, Miss Watts? That's fine. Nine a.m. is fine. Okay, nine a.m. All right. And I think we put. Yeah, we did put Miss. Did we keep Miss Bray at one? All right. Well, maybe you want to. You think she needs to be reminded? Probably so. That. Just so why don't we move Miss Bray to nine a.m. and then we'll just. And do you mind reminding her? I would be happy to. Okay. She'll be grumpy, but that way y'all won't miss <coughs> other things. Thank All you, right. Judge. And on uh, Brian Middlebrooks, that's officer from APD. Let me check, has this been on here before? This is 127 days of indictment. Go ahead for 
I'm sorry, Officer Dunn. Yes, Judge. The, the difference with this particular case, even though Mr. Middlebrooks has been in the same amount of time, and this is his first time on a preliminary hearing calendar, is um, Assistant District Attorney um, McCulley said that he spoke with the officer yesterday and that officer still failed to show today. So there's no legal excuse for his absence um, that we're aware of, and we'd ask for a dismissal for want of prosecution. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. McCullough. Yes, Your Honor. We have properly subpoenaed the officer, Your Honor. We use um, our process that we have for subpoenaing the officers, Your Honor, and that process was done. I did make personal contact with Mr. William Dunn on his personal cell phone, Your Honor. Um, the conversation um, was short. I informed him of the place, the time, and which courtroom it was. I remind him of the defendant's name, and um, at that time, um, he he replied, okay, Your Honor. So he I made personal contact and he, he is aware um even from the prosecutor um that the hearing is for today. Okay. All right, we'll give this one final reset. You want it on the same day? Do we have room on the same day, Ms. Uh, Watts? Yes, yes, we do. We that do works. nine a.m. She and said, she said, yeah, I couldn't hear. I'm she sorry. said, yes, judge. And will the order reflect that this yes. would be the final time? Thank you. Final reset for this one too. Thank you, judge. All right. So now we've got this officer here for, so that clears up everything except this last case we're here, right? All right. So Good this job. is Omer Foster, 127 days without indictment, 22 CP 215037. Position of marijuana with intent to distribute. Possession of controlled substance schedule three, four, five with intent to distribute. Possession of controlled substance in schedule one, two with intent to distribute. Possession of controlled substance in schedule one or two with intent to distribute. Possession of a firearm or a knife during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies. Officer, raise your right hand. You swear a firm testimony about to give is the truth, told truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, Your Honor, I do. All right. Can you state your name spelled for a court reporter? My name is Officer Joseph Cubitz. First name is J O S E P H. Last name is Cubitz, K U B I T Z. <coughs> May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Officer Cubis, where are you currently employed? I'm employed with the City of Atlanta Police Department. Were you employed with them on December the 29th, 2022? Yes. How did you become aware of Omer Kwasan Foster? So the Zone 6 Field Investigations Team was conducting a narcotics detail in the area of 840 McDonough Boulevard. What county is that in? A Fulton County. Please go ahead. An undercover Atlanta police officer identified Mr. Foster as a person, a uh, target person of interest during the narcotics investigation that we're conducting. He observed what he saw, uh, what he believed, <clears throat> what he believed to be a hand to hand narcotics transaction conducted by Mr. Foster. And what is a hand to hand transaction? So a hand to <clears throat> hand to hand narcotics transaction is where one person conducts a transaction with another person and drugs and money are exchanged during the transaction. And did a uh, narcotics officer see Mr. Omer, Mr. Foster uh, conduct a hand-to-hand -hand transaction? Yes, sir. And how far was a narcotics officer away from Mr. Foster when he observed this? As to that, I can't be sure. I was in a marked unit. I wasn't an undercover officer. I was a takedown officer in the detail. And once an undercover officer sees or um, becomes concerned about something, what are the next steps? So once an undercover officer identifies a target that he is deemed that he has observed conduct a hand-to-hand -hand narcotics transaction or committed an offense, uh, what he'll do is he'll get on the radio and he'll let us know, the marked units via radio, what he saw, He'll describe the clothing of the person. He'll describe if they're in a vehicle or if they're next to a vehicle. If they're in a parking lot, he'll describe where they're at in the parking lot and so on and so forth to just try and paint the clear the picture as clearly as possible so that we can envision what we're walking into because we don't have eyes on us. And was that done in regards to this case? Yes. And after that information was relayed to you, what happened next? So the next step that happened was the marked units moved in to 840 McDonough Boulevard. I myself was in a marked patrol vehicle. Uh, as we moved in, Mr. Foster exited the vehicle that he was in and attempted to enter the store, at which point I stopped him and detained him before he could enter the store. And after you detained him, what did you do? 
So while detaining him, I noticed that there were marijuana flakes all over the front of Mr. Foster's person. Also while detaining him, he dropped the key fob for the vehicle that he had just exited. I believe it was a white Chevy. Um, so I detained him. I asked him if there was any, if he had any more marijuana in his person. Mr. M Mr. Foster said that he did have marijuana on his person. And then I retrieved marijuana from, I believe it was his left front jacket pocket. And after you retrieved the marijuana, what was what did what happened next? Uh, the next thing that occurred was he was placed in the back of a patrol vehicle. Uh, probable cause search of the vehicle that he was previously occupying was conducted. Uh, due to that search, there was multiple narcotics and a firearm recovered from the vehicle. And um, can you go through each narcotic? Um, and can you discuss what you believe the narcotic was? How the narcotic was packaged and the weight of the narcotic, please. Uh, the first narcotic that we can go through is suspected ecstasy. It's a schedule one, uh, 19 suspected ecstasy pills with two electronic digital scales and patch packaging material. Second narcotic is and going. How was the ecstasy packaged? I believe it was in one package. Okay. I believe if I remember correctly, I believe it was in one package. Please go to the next one. Uh, the next narcotic would be 7.8 grams of suspected crack cocaine, which is a Schedule II controlled substance. That was separated into 17 different baggies, uh, along with two electronic digital scales and a digital, additional packaging material. And when you say packaging material, what kind of material are you doing? Uh... So packaging material generally is referred to as clear little sandwich baggies. It can be full-size sandwich baggies or what is also known as thumbnails, which is about the size of a thumb. Um, with the regular size sandwich bags, narcotics are often put into the corners of the bags. And then once they're put in, they're tied off and cut off and that becomes packaging material. Uh, additionally, the little thumbnail bags are, they're like pre-packaged little narcotics baggies. So when we say packaging material, we're either referring to one of those. And you also said it was scales. Um using your training and experience what is the scales used for so and using my knowledge training and experience scales electronic digital scales particularly are often used to weigh narcotics and then package them up afterwards for resale okay and so you went through the ecstasy and the crack cocaine please go ahead and go to the next narcotic the next narcotic will be suspected promethazine hydrochloride syrup uh, it's a Schedule 5 that was packaged into three separate containers along with the digital scales and packaging material. I believe the three separate containers were baby bottles. Uh, from my knowledge, training experience, promethazine um, and hydrochloride syrup is often used to make a drink known as syrup. Uh, what's often done is it's packaged in baby bottles because they can then sell it by the drip. They'll use the baby bottle, the nipple to to drip out, you know, like a drip or two of promethazine hydrochloride into a Sprite bottle or a Fanta bottle or any other kind of soda. And then they'll sell the promethazine by the, the drop. And was you able to determine if Mr. Foster had a um, prescription for the promethazine? No, we were not. And... You have one narcotic left, please. Can you please go ahead and describe that one? The last narcotic is 109.2 grams of marijuana um, separated into 29 different baggies along with two electronic digital scales and additional packaging material. And with the way it was packaged, um, using your knowledge, training, and experience, why would the marijuana be packaged the way it was? The marijuana would be packaged the way it was so it could be resold on the street. And was any um, cash um, recovered during this um, investigation from Mr. Foster? I can't remember 100%, but we have a policy in APD. Uh, if he had cash on him and it was less than $500, he was allowed to keep it. We don't take any, if it's less than $500, we don't seize it as a, a party to the evidence of the crime. Okay. 
And can you please discuss your now your training that you have had for your current position? So training that I've currently had for my position, I'm a member of the Zone 6 field investigations team. I've undergone the basic post course as well as other narcotics identification classes. Uh, I've taken uh, field investigations uh, and general investigations classes. Uh, also, I have gone undergone tactical field operator training as well as uh, search warrant writing classes and um, basic narcotics investigations. And how long have you been employed with APD? I've been employed with APD since 2017, January of 2017. And just give me a rough estimate. How many um, drug arrests have you made? Several hundreds. And the crack cocaine, why did you believe that the substance um, was crack cocaine? So I believe the substance was crack cocaine because of my interaction with suspected crack cocaine on the street before as well. Like I said, uh, drug identification class and knowledge training and experience that I've developed over the course of my career where I've came in contact with crack cocaine numerous times. And why did you think the substance was ecstasy? Ecstasy, I believed it was ecstasy because knowledge training experience um, as well as narcotics identification classes and then coming into contact with ecstasy multiple times on the street during my career. And why did you think the substance was promethazine? So if I remember correctly, one of the bottles was actually labeled promethazine um, hydrochloride and the other two were dark brown uh, medicine bottles. And once again, through my knowledge training experience, that's how promethazine hydrochloride is distributed from the pharmacy. And was there a label on the actual bottle that had um, promethazine on it? I think so. I, if I remember correctly, I think there was a label on the brown bottle that had like the promethazine hydrochloride label on it. And then there were the two baby bottles with the, the drippers on them. Did it have a name for like a patient that it was prescribed to? I don't remember on that one. And the marijuana, why did you assume that the uh, substance was marijuana that you recovered? Uh, once again, through my knowledge training experience, coming in contact with it hundreds of times, uh, the distinct smell that it gives off all were telltale signs that it was marijuana. You have a warrant for possession of firearm or knife during a commission or attempt to commit certain felonies. What was the basis for that warrant? Uh, the basis for that warrant was that Mr. Foster was in violation of several controlled substance laws and there was a firearm recovered from the vehicle that he had gotten out of. What kind of uh, firearm was it? It was a Maverick 12 gauge shotgun. And was it sawed off? No, I don't think so. You said when you came in contact, you said the key fob um, fell. Right. How um, did it fall out of his pocket? Did it fall out of his hand? I believe it fell out of his hand. As I was detaining him, I believe the key fob fell out of his hand. And did the key fob open the act? Was the vehicle open or did you have to use the key to open it? Uh, I don't remember. There, I wasn't the actual officer that conducted the search of the vehicle but I believe the vehicle was already unlocked. Did someone confirm that that key fob went with that vehicle? Yes, so when the vehicle was impounded, we gave that key to the wrecker, the wrecker service, and that was the key that went with the vehicle. And when you detained Mr. Foster, how far away from the vehicle was he when you detained him? A couple parking spaces, so maybe three or four parking spaces. So you're talking roughly four, eight, 12, anywhere from maybe 15, 15 to 20 foot away from the vehicle, maximum. Was there anybody else inside the vehicle at the time? No. 
Um, after the hand-to-hand -hand transaction, did anybody else have control of the vehicle? No, I don't believe so. After undercover officers observed him, did officers continue to observe him until he was detained? Yes. Yes, sir. Yep. The undercover officer stayed in place until everything had died down. What was the address where you detained him at? It would be 840 McDonough Boulevard. And what county is that in? That is in Fulton County. And do you see Omer Foster in a courtroom at this time? Everybody remove your mask. Yes, sir. Can you please describe an article of clothing that he is wearing? He's wearing a blue shirt with a white shirt underneath it. May the court recognize he has positively identified the defendant. Noted. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. All right, Cross. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, officer. Good, good afternoon, ma'am. All right, I just have a couple follow-ups for you. Um, with respect to the initial contact um, of this investigation, how many total officers were undercover or surveilling the area? Just one. Just one in that particular location? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, what about with you? Because there were several other officers kind of nearby, right? Right. So with me, I believe there was, I was in a car with my partner. There was another, I believe, two men take down car and then another single man take down car. So that would have been five officers. Okay. Um, did y'all have body worn camera on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Even the undercover officer? No, ma'am. Undercover officers do not wear body worn cameras. Okay. Were, was he or she in plain clothes at the time or? Let me keep it down a little bit. Thanks, sorry. I, no, not you, I was talking about, that's all I can hear is them back here laughing at me. They're getting married, that's great, but they just can't be like, woohoo. Yes, ma'am, he was in plain clothes. Thank you. Um, and how long had he has he been working with APD? I think he's been with APD since 2018. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry, they're on the back hallway. I think they get excited when they get in the hallway, so then that's all I can hear. Hey, thanks. Go ahead. Thanks. Sorry, Ms. Rosen. Uh, sorry. You're okay. How long has he specifically been doing this kind of work with APD? Undercover work? Yes. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I believe a couple of years. Okay. Have you worked with him before? Yes. Okay. How many approximately um, arrests have y'all made together? where I'm the primary officer or as a unit, because it kind of <laughs> cycles through. Sorry, I'll ask it a different way. Um, how many times have you been involved in a bust, I guess, where he was the undercover? I would say roughly at least, at least 20. Okay. And you don't know how far away he was from? No, ma'am, I don't. Okay. Did he describe what exactly he saw that was exchanged? Uh, no, ma'am, he didn't. To the best of my knowledge, what he said on the radio was he observed a suspected hand-to-hand -hand narcotics transaction and then described Mr. Foster and the vehicle. Okay. Was it daytime or nighttime? It was daytime. Okay. Um, and he described the clothing my client was wearing? Yes, ma'am. Did he describe whether he was carrying anything? I don't believe so. Uh, when he gave the description out, I believe he said he was in the car. Okay, so he never mentioned a red backpack to your knowledge? No. Okay. Um, and then how long did it take for you to interact with my client after you got that radio call? I would say maximum 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, because okay. we're, staged, we're staged in the media area but not so close as to be right on top of the scene. So we're 15 or 20 seconds out. Okay, and when you pulled up, did you have your blue lights activated? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so you got out of the car and immediately detained my client? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, did that include handcuffs? Yes, ma'am. And you had four other officers with you? Yes, ma'am. Was he Mirandized? Yes, ma'am. Okay immediately upon being handcuffed no he was not immediately upon being handcuffed he was mirandized afterwards um 
maybe like I would say 10, 15 minutes afterwards. Okay. Um, but you did start asking him questions after you handcuffed him. I did. Okay. Um, like you asked him if he had any marijuana on his person. I asked him if he had any more marijuana on his person due to the fact that I saw marijuana flakes in plain view on his clothing as he attempted to enter the grocery store. Sure. That was just so I'm correct. That was after you'd already detained him that you were able to see that. I thought was as I was coming up to him. Okay. All right. And at what point, or I guess I'll back up, um, to get to my client, did you all have to walk past his vehicle or were you coming from a different angle? Uh, we were, we parked sort of at an angle and then he left the vehicle at an angle at which I intercepted, it was almost like a triangle and I intercepted him at an angle. Okay. So at what point did you or your fellow officers actually go over to the vehicle? I believe the second takedown team went directly to the vehicle. Okay. And you didn't have any canine units with you, right? That is correct. Right. And then the probable cause search of the vehicle was conducted? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Where specifically was this red backpack located? I believe it was in the back seat. Back seat on the seat or under the seat? I don't know. I didn't do the search. Okay. But those officers would have been wearing their body worn camera, you said? Yes, that's correct. And that's all been preserved in evidence? Yes, ma'am. What about the location of the shotgun? That was in the trunk. That was in the trunk. Right. Okay. Do you know who the shotgun belonged to? I believe, I believe after I had Mirandized Mr. Foster, he took possession of the shotgun in the vehicle, but not the red book bag. When you say he took possession of it, what do you mean? Like he said, it was like, yeah, it's mine. Like the car's mine, the gun's mine, but the, the book bag's not mine. Okay. Sorry, deputy. Can you try one more time over here in this door? Yes. Now they're over there. Sorry. I saw it all I could hear. All right, go ahead. Did you field test any of the narcotics on scene? No, ma'am. We, do, we don't field test um, for our policy due to the, uh, the threat of... Um, I mean, I had it in my head, the, the powder, the, the fentanyl. So because of the threat of fentanyl and officer exposure, we don't field test anymore. We send everything to the GBI. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't know how many times I'm going to sound to be quiet, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you. That's all I want to do. Okay. That's okay. That's all right. Just, I know you're happy. I know you're happy. Sorry. With the hearing aids, it makes them pick it up even louder. Go ahead. Good. I'm almost done, Judge. That's okay. No worries. It's not your fault at all. In this case, everything's already been submitted to the GBI? Yes, ma'am. It was submitted to the annex the same day, and then they'll submit it to the GBI. Okay. Have they done that already? I don't know. Okay. So you haven't gotten any report back yet? No, ma'am. Okay. Did you say how many milliliters of the hydrochloride syrup there was. Uh, no, ma'am, I did not. Do you know how much there was? No, ma'am, I don't. Okay, I don't have any further questions. Thank you for your time. All right, anything else? No follow-up questions, Your Honor. I ask that the officer be released in a lot of leave, please. All right. Thank you, officer. Stay safe out there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for being patient. Yes, ma'am. All right. Go ahead with argument. State or defense first, Judge. Whichever you would I'll like. Go ahead. Ask me to the sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll go first, Judge. Um, okay. just if he says anything you need to respond to, I'll be glad to Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm just checking the numbers of these counts. Um, only with respect, we'll submit on counts one through four, Judge, but with respect to count five, um, hearing evidence that the firearm was located in the trunk of the vehicle and knowing that during the commission or attempt to commit certain felonies of this firearm, it has to be in immediate control and the um, individual has to be exercising dominion or control over the weapon. Um, we would ask that that case be dismissed for lack of probable cause. That count, apologies. All right, go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Um, your Honor, he said he was approximately 10 feet away at the time. 
he said one or two parking spots, Your Honor. It shows that he has constructive possession at that time, Your Honor. He said they went in the L. Um, um, he drove the, the actual cruiser up in the L position, Your Honor, and he was only two parking spots away. The state will go ahead and say that that is constructive uh, possession because um, he is the only one close. It was nobody else close. And uh, the key fob dropped and he was literally within feet of his vehicle, Your Honor. See, the statute says have within arm's reach of his persons. All right. That was my response, Judge. I believe that this particular statute is pretty specific about how close the individual has to be. Yeah, yeah it says uh, on 161106 b says any person shall have within arm's reach of his or her person a firearm or a knife having a blade of three inches or more during the commission of an attempt to commit felonies. Anything else, Mr. McCauley? Nothing else at this time, Your Honor. All right. All right, I'll go ahead and find probable cause on counts one through four, but yeah. I mean, they still may indict you on that, on the other count, sir, but I'll find there's no probable cause on that. All right, we'll go ahead and hear it on bond and preach. Judge, which defendant? This is Omer Foster. Foster, LaMare, seven prior arrests, took a first offender on a burglar in 2012, nothing further. All right, so this is, let's see. 109.2 grams of marijuana, 29 different baggies. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and it just says uh, promethazine hydrochloride syrup. Doesn't really say how many. Uh, 7.8 grams of suspected co crack cocaine in 17 different baggies and 19 suspected ecstasy pills. All right, go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Foster is 28 years old. He is a lifelong Georgia resident and has resided here in the metro Atlanta area for the past 10 years. Um, his mom lives in Riverdale. Most of his family is right here in Atlanta with him, including his two young boys. His oldest turns four this May. Um, he does have a good address in Riverdale, Georgia, where he would live with his wife. I did submit a change of address form. Um, and he has been the primary caregiver, I mean, primary supporter, excuse me, of his family um, while he was out on, or while he's been out of custody. But since then they have had a very difficult time making ends meet. Um, Mr. Foster isn't sure that any amount of bond at this point is gonna be something that they can afford. Um, he did graduate high school in, or from Savannah High School in 2013 and was most recently working for the building, for the building industrial scaffolding um, company. He's been doing that for the past four years. He's also in the Carpenters Union and has been since 2018. He has a number of different certifications in wood framing, safety and fire hazard, asbestos certifications, forklift certifications. He has these qualifications that um, would enable him to get a good job. And he's also here in at the jail. He's been a part of the New Beginnings program and has been recommended to join some outpatient programming. He's looking forward to that um, and intends to do that. So we would ask for any conditions that the court sets to have an exception for his ability to seek substance abuse treatment, perhaps here in Fulton County, since I believe the New Beginnings program has locations here. Um, and Judge, yes, I have the the court's most recent bond order in front of me, and we would just be asking for a reduction on all four of the existing counts for count one. We'd ask for a reduction to 3,000, count two, 3,000, count three, 4,000, and count four, um, 5,000. Thank you. All right, Mr. McCauley. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, we have, um, this is not a small amount. This is not personal use, Your Honor. Um, the court has found um, um, it is three, it is four charges with intent to distribute, Your Honor, the way it was packaged. And also we are concerned in regards to the public safety, Your Honor, um, with this amount of drugs that are there, Your Honor, we are concerned about um, the community and what happens, what happens when people try to seek, buy, or try to um, what happens after they use drugs, Your Honor, I ask um, that the court take that into consideration, and we will defer to the court in regards to the amount of bond. 
All right, so on here, there was a lot thrown you. So you're gonna live, he's gonna live at the Riverdale address? Yes, yeah, so okay. I submitted a change of address. It's possible it just appears on the, like within the case and isn't reflected on the Oh, sure, there. yeah, okay. It's All there. right, so no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for see your lawyer or court, or if your lawyer gets you into some sort of uh, addiction program. All right, so you can't come for any other reason. Can't get gas, can't stop, fill up your air, tires with the air, can't get a snack, even if you come for addiction. Can't stop for anything except go there and leave. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 840 McDonough Boulevard, Southeast. Gonna have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, uh, attorney visits, when I say uh, lawyer. And employment, as long as you provide the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, the exact location you're going to be working. And also for the um, addiction treatment, if um, she gets you into that program, all you need to do, sir, is let the ankle monitoring company know and Ms. Rosenhoover where you're going, okay? So they'll know, let's see. I don't think there's any hold. Did he, did he complete the first offender? I Bostic, does it look like he completed first offender? I think so. Okay. I don't it know if you do or not. It doesn't say anything on his GCIC that about being revoked. Okay. All right. So that I think that would be the only thing if if by chance, but if he's done it. So we'll do, let's see. Uh, five thousand, three thousand, four thousand, and five thousand. Five thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Income honors paid for by the county. Best of luck to you, sir. You got that, Ms. Hollenbeck? I'll send, I'll mail you the new one. But just so yes, I did. Thank you. Out. All right. I think that's it. So we got this one Carter for the same thing. Ms. Rosenhoover, do you need to pour any of your people out and tell them, or are you just going to go back there? I'll go back there and you sure? talk to them real quick. Yeah. Okay. All right. Looks like that's it. Thank you, Madam Court Reporter.